Hello, Val. Hi, Rebecca. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here with you today, everyone. This is Valerie Leeds, and she is one of my oldest friends, 25 years plus and counting, and it's just such a delight for you to share some time with us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for asking me. Yeah, and I love what you have in the background. Dream until your dreams come true. That is so positive, and that's just who you are to me. You just are so positive, and you've always been that way. I've known you 25 years on your journey, and you, no matter what you're working on, and you've done so much, I'll get into that in a second, you always have this positive, sunshiny attitude. I think that was even your nickname in high school, right? <laughs> yes, sunshine, sunny, yeah, it was. It's kind of funny to remember yeah, that. It's of awesome. course, so that's always <laughs> been like your vibe. So I know uh, you've been busy in the last uh, several years, many years. You've had a certification as a 500-hour yoga teacher trainer. Yeah. You've uh, become a certified health coach, and you've given me so much advice about health and nutrition, but that's for another summit because we're focused on spirituality. <laughs> I think we could talk on that too. You're a body work and energy therapist, and you are currently the owner of the Zen Den Yoga School and Retreat and Wellness Center in Boca Raton, Florida, and I'm going to be joining you guys to yeah. do a seminar there, so I'm so excited about that. So awesome. uh, you are going to be listening to this in January, so the seminar will already be over. I so know, I know. <laughs> we are uh, talking about 2020, but before we get into that, what has your journey been? I know uh, at one point you were in New York City selling advertisements for AOL, and now you own your yoga school and retreat center, and a lot of women that talk to me are like, how do I take my passion and my dream and my side hustle and leave my full-time 40-hour a week job. So I, I think this part of your journey will really help people. So how did that transition happen? You know, the biggest part of my transition and my journey as a whole has been understanding on the one hand, yes, being able to make money is important. However, I've always stayed true to my heart and my intuition and what I feel is light and right for me isn't always about that. And sometimes we get to trust the process and honor our truth. And when we're able to use different spiritual tools, which we're gonna talk about today, I'm so excited to be here and be a part of this summit, um, we, tune in a little more clearly to those still small voices. And I knew after four years, I worked at AOL prior to the merger with Time Warner and post-merger. Unfortunately, I just missed the stock split, so I didn't become a millionaire while I was there. But um, way. <laughs> you know what, it's all good. Um, I have richness in other ways. And the thing that was interesting was I kind of was just on autopilot where I was there at the end and it wasn't fun. It didn't feel good anymore. And I started to notice this is not really resonating with my life. And so I started to ask questions. What else is possible? And from there, I decided to quit and I got some um, opportunities to talk to other people who were execs and they introduced me to a part-time work where I could do more of what I loved. And then eventually I met um, an ex-husband who I was doing body work and energy therapy and we opened a personal training studio and that was a stepping stone to everything else to open up from there. But it was moving in the direction of what felt light and right for me. And that was really the most important part of it where if you're able to align with your thoughts and your actions and what's in your heart, it comes together really well in that flow state. Absolutely. And what is the question that you ask to find out if somebody, if you're making the right or wrong decision? I know you've helped me with this before. Like, what does, does it feel light or what is the question? I forget. So you're asking yourself, um, well, first of all, asking yourself about the infinite possibilities and then asking, you know, you, you start to tune in to how does it get any better than this and what else is possible. And then from there, you're able to discern and discriminate the light and the heavies. And um, we could talk a little bit more about that internal barometer. That's one of the tools that I teach in my language of energy class here at the school um, to our retreat guests is really being able to feel into that. And it is, it is 
opening. It's opening up to your energetic self that's larger just than your physical body, but we're connected. So those tools are really important to be able to ask the questions and tune in. So um, that's a big part of it. Yeah, I like that. What is lighter? What is heavier? Because then you can mm -hmm. kind of feel the energy of it. Yeah, we feel what's heavy in our gut. And it doesn't feel good. We feel heavy or we feel it in our shoulders. Maybe our neck is tight. There's like contraction versus light is like, woo, effervescent. And your heart is open and you feel like you can shout it from the mountaintops. And that's like, it's important to be able to recognize, like, do I feel like skipping around? Is this something that feels really good and energizing? Or am I like, oh, this is a have to, so much drudgery. You know what I mean? That's the difference. Absolutely. Well, some people don't ever feel happy and like skipping around because they're kind of in a low vibrating place. They feel stuck. They feel like they're trapped in the same job and a relationship that doesn't feel good. So what kind of a, advice do you give people who can't access that happy, skippy feeling? Well, starting at the beginning, we talk about um, starting to notice if something doesn't feel right, you're tuning into your awareness. So the beginning is the awareness of, wow, I'm in a space that I'm not, I'm not content, I'm not liking, I'm feeling depressed, or I'm feeling unable to get off the couch. Or So you start to notice that. So the identification and the awareness is the beginning. Then the second part, I call it the archangel system. This is part of my, my coaching program. The A is the awareness. And then R is moving into the ability to respond. Response ability with an A. Response hyphen ability. So we have the ability to respond in each moment. So we can then tune in and say, oh, well, what should I make a choice about? And what would actually offer me an opportunity to move, move things in a different way, to shift out of the situation that doesn't feel good? Right. So if you're in a relationship that's not working or a workplace that's not working, well, start to talk about it, start to journal about it. Maybe go to a meeting, go to a group that can help give you some support so you're not feeling alone. And that sometimes works for people to begin the process. And also, of course, like what are they doing in their spiritual practice? So we're going to talk more about that. But the beginning is identifying that thing. Identifying. I like what you said about choices, because I think when people realize they have choices, it's so empowering to them that they're not stuck, that they do have choices in their life. They can choose a different relationship, a different job, and most importantly, a different mindset. And that all starts with spirituality, which is why you're the first speaker of my summit. Spirituality is the foundation of getting all seven areas in alignment. Without the yeah. spirituality, the other areas are not going to line up so that you can manifest abundance and ultimately live a happy, joyful life, which is the goal. Yeah. Right? And I think we're both living that. So, yeah. so what is your relationship like with source energy, a power greater than yourself, the universe, whatever you would call it? Um, what is that relationship like and has it changed over the years? Well, that's a deep question. <laughs> that's awesome, Rebecca. Um, has it changed over the years? Yeah, my spiritual journey has grown. I've gotten deeper. I've expanded my practice. Um, over the years, I've been really fortunate um, doing body work and energy therapy for so many years to have a feeling of okay, there's something greater than myself. So that was the beginning. Um, even in high school, I had a high school metaphysics class with Dr. Binman that was teaching us about all kinds of aspects of spirituality that weren't focused on religion per se. So um, I started to realize, oh, energy, this is a thing, right? This is a tangible thing. And so tuning into that for me began really with meditation um, and my relationship is using meditation and some people call it prayer very similar but recognizing that through the meditation through using your breath to help you focus and there's different focuses and tools to focus but breath is a huge one you can access such a huge huge way to change your parasympathetic nervous system to allow yourself to relieve stress and anxiety to have a more productive day to tap into that lightness 
right? Where you're starting to feel into, wow, okay, I start to feel better each day. And the meditation then comes off the mat or off the cushion into your workplace, into your relationships, and maybe you're less reactive, right? So for me, that was a big thing, you know, and I'm still working on that where it's a practice. We call it meditation practice and yoga practice for a reason that each day we, we use these tools. And like you said, the choices in each moment to use my breath, to use meditation is new in each moment. So every brand, every moment is brand new. And that's I really- I love when you say, I know a lot of your teachings because we're best friends, but I love that you say every 10 seconds is in your reality. So yeah. even if you feel derailed or feel reactive, you can always take a breath and like, and then get centered again. Right. Hit the pause button. Yeah. I call it hit the pause button. There's magic in the pause. There is, there is. Yeah. And I actually visualize those two, you know, up straight up and down lines, like sometimes <laughs> just pause, take a breath, you know, leave the room, get yeah. space, whatever it takes, and then come back. So t I love that you talked about meditation. In my opinion, meditation is listening to God and praying is talking to God. Okay, so, beautiful. What is your daily practice? And if somebody's new, like I, I know you have a lot of students that don't have a daily practice. How do you teach someone who's never meditated or had a daily practice? How, how do they create that space in their home? To have a daily practice so what is your first of all what is your daily practice do you have a morning ritual how do you start your day so yes i do have a morning ritual you asked me a few questions so um number I'm, one, I'm trying to get them all out <laughs> i know we only have a short time so um we could do a whole workshop together okay. um so the having a space is valuable however if somebody doesn't feel that they have a whole space they could just start by the minute they open their eyes on the pillow, tuning into their breath, sitting up and, you know, and choosing their breath. So for example, you could simply say, okay, I'm going to focus on my breath and I'm going to create an intention for my day. This is just very simple. You don't have to have a whole separate room. You could just do that and maybe breathing in for a count of four, pausing in the heart space to bring that intention into your heart and then exhaling for a count of four breathing in for a count of four pausing in the heart space exhaling for a count of four that's simple right so my meditation practice i'm often teaching because we have retreat guests year round and we have a separate studio and you can start to design a space in your home with a little altar having some crystals maybe, having some beautiful pictures or um, nice um, colors around you that really feel serene and uplifting to you. So you design some decor, like, you know, here we have a little corner with dream. I don't know if you can hear behind me, but I've got plants and I've got lava rocks and I've got a little fountain. So it's very, yeah, it's very soothing. Yeah, it's very soothing. So we create these spaces to help us to tune in to our higher vibration. That's amazing. But, you know, I was actually in a yoga class yesterday. I was talking to you on the way and she's like, why do we go to Bali? Like, why do we go to Hawaii or on a yoga retreat? Because we want to create the conditions to right. feel more relaxed and feel more present and feel in our bodies. But not everybody can afford to go to Bali and Hawaii. So if somebody's, you know, having a stressful day at work, through your breath technique that you just shared so awesomely, inhale for four counts, hold for four counts, exhale, you can create safe space anywhere. All it yeah. takes is your breath and just the willingness to settle in your body for even a few minutes. Yes, yes, even for a few minutes, yes. We also, we also teach Tai Chi, and so you can just do a few minutes of Tai Chi, you can do a few minutes of conscious breathing. Sometimes we tell people, go outside. And maybe if there's not conditions in your home right now where you feel so safe and comfortable, just take a walk with nature and, and focus on your breath that way and, and be able to connect with the trees, getting grounded with your feet on the earth, connecting with the sky and the clouds and just nature is huge. Here we have our ocean in Boca, but you can do it just walking you know, in a place where there's a park or around the block in your neighborhood. Yeah, I like that. It's a walking meditation and just 
also getting into your senses, right? Like when you're doing a walking meditation, looking at the ridges on the leaf, looking at the colors of the flower, like looking at the sun coming through the clouds, that can be really settling in the, in the system and help you take your mind off the stress. And, you know, stress is the number one killer and the number one antidote for stress is spirituality, which is why this is such a crucial part of having a balanced life and having a happy, abundant life. Because if you have stress, nothing matters. Like if you're a gazillionaire and you have stress, and you're not enjoying it, then what's the point? The whole point is to be serene and happy. And these tools that you're giving us give us access to that. So yes, I think that's a great point. Stress is a huge killer. So many people, they might eat really well or work out a ton, but they forget about their lifestyle and their attitude. And those are really huge, huge parts of what caused people to go out of alignment in the first place. So being able to connect and this internal barometer of it's really actually between your heart and your, and your gut in to tune in to your spirit side of yourself and to be able to connect with God or source energy or the universe, this is our internal barometer and we can then check in. And if we need to use something, well, just close your eyes and being present or going out in nature to be present, right? And then the other thing I was going to share was community, right? There's so many things available right now. You can start to find it either online or in your local community through um, different groups. And that's something that's really valuable too, to help you if you're feeling like unsure, well, you can, you can find a teacher or a coach pretty easily in different groups who do things um, to help, help you. I love the saying that community breeds immunity. And this is a very isolated society that we're living in. Everyone's, you know, at home staring at their phones right. and we don't have our tribe. We don't have the people to support and connect with that we used to, but they are out there. They are waiting for you. They are looking for new people. So since this is a new year and a new you, the name of our retreat, new year, new yeah. you, you can find a support system. You can find a 12-step group, a church, a temple, a drum work circle, a yoga class. You can find a community that you resonate with and you don't have to choose the first one. You can try different ones until you find one that you resonate with. And I just really encourage in-person communities because you can say, oh, I'm part of a Facebook page and stuff, but I don't think it does the same thing to your body that actually being in a community. They say that hugs, like, dramatically change your biochemistry yes like for a few seconds yeah like i think it's like seven or eight seconds hugs need to be because that's when your whole chemistry changes and you release those hormones they actually have done studies about the flow state now so that they know that there's um, norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, anandamide, the bliss molecule. Like there's all these different amazing, amazing hormones and chemicals that get released. Hogs is one really good way and getting into that flow state. So um, you can't take these orally. You need, to, you need to cultivate your spiritual practice in order to have these. So tell us more about uh, what is flow state and how do people get into it? I'm curious. Okay, so flow state is a really, um, it's, a, it's a new terminology to speak about state of being. So for example, if you're having a day and you wake up and you're kind of cranky and you know, maybe um, you spill something on yourself and you have to change. You're like, oh my God, now I'm late. And then, oh yeah, this sucks because now I'm going to miss my meeting and I have to reschedule it. I might not get that promotion. And this is like really aggravating. And oh my God, who's going to walk my dogs? So I have to stay late at work. And then, oh, I thought I had a date later, but now I am stuck with this dog situation. Oh my God, this whole day sucks. You're focused on the problem. That's not a full state. <laughs> <laughs> the alternative is you start your day with some meditation, maybe some movements, whether it's yoga or a workout at the gym, or even just, you know, doing some light resistance training in your home with a video, um, or going for a walk with your friends or walking the dog, right? There's all these things. And then all of a sudden, oh, hit all green lights, got to work early, woohoo. And then you're, you're working and then suddenly you're thinking about somebody and you get a phone call from that person and everything is just 
overflowing. Like you suddenly um, get a check in the mail that you weren't expecting early. I mean, there's just things that sort of follow onto things, onto things. So the way the energy works, it's always spiraling up and always spiraling down. So we get to tune into this, okay? So depending on our focus, our focus is where our attention flows, okay? So I actually, in my class, I use like a tube. <laughs> and we all look at through the tube and we're like, oh, our focus is kind of small, right? It's actually not that big, even though as women were amazing at multitasking, and the focus is kind of small. So if you are focused on the problem or stuff that's not working or obstacles, you can't get into flow. It's like the vibration doesn't work. If you're focused on, wow, okay, well, there might be an obstacle, but what else is possible? I see this, this might be a challenge, but really there's an opportunity here. What is the opportunity? What is the gift? Then from there, things start to open up and that energy starts spiraling up and you can move into the flow state as long as you keep expanding your focus onto higher vibration what is your what are you grateful for thanksgiving's tomorrow right what would what would love do what's in my heart space that's going to raise your vibration so you use these tools to keep raising your vibration and shifting like we talked about each moment to each moment mindfully consciously into the greater higher vibration greater choice for you and that helps you move into flow state because we all know when we all hit like a day and it's like just charge forward, amazing, amazing things happening. You get a promotion, you um, just have everything you were thinking of happening just rapidly, then you're moving into flow state. Sometimes when you watch sports, you know, or watch a musician, a really talented musician, you can mm -hmm. see the flow state in action there, yeah. right? They're not thinking, oh, now I need to dribble. Wait, let me think, I have to shoot. No, 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 they're just flowing, right? So that's some examples. So you're saying meditation and starting your day is very crucial to getting in flow state. So if somebody, if somebody is running late, they don't have time, whatever you focus on gets bigger. So if you focus on your problems, the problems get bigger. If you focus on the solutions, the solutions get bigger. So if you focus what on what else is possible and how does it get any better than this? Just opening up right? You open up and do, I'm not going to focus on those circumstances because I'm bigger than the circumstances. There's something greater at work and I can tune in and plug into that. So you know what, even though I'm late, I recognize, you know what, everything will be perfect and okay. I'm going to take some breaths now so I can calm down the stress levels and recognize everything's perfect and okay. Maybe there's a reason. Maybe I avoided being in an accident traffic jam. You know, who knows, right? So that's what you're just trusting in so that power greater than yourself. So being happy and having a spirituality is a choice and a practice moment to moment is what you're saying. Yes. We can choose and if our mind is wired, I know they've done a lot of studies on, you know, how your mind is wired, neurotransmitters and pathways in your mind. If your mind is wired to go to the problem and think negative, it's going to be more of a concerted effort to go positive. But once you rewire your brain, which is possible scientifically, then it's a lot easier to stay positive and stay happy. Yes, we talk about um, the neural pathways. Yeah. So there's neural pathways in the in the mind, and so it's very easy to get stuck in loops and patterns. And if you're um, accustomed to being around negativity, maybe you had some negativity growing up. We all have different experiences growing up, and yet same, same, but different, right? We, we end up dealing with um, life as it comes and there's ups and downs. So it's not so much we need to be happy and pretend there's no down times. Right. We need to learn that we can experience our experience, acknowledge those down times, acknowledge when there's something that's not working, and then we choose how we're gonna move through it. So the how is the really important part. Um, it's, it's all about what what mindful and what conscious choice can I make in this situation? Rather than being reactive, you're interacting with it. And when you're choosing what's in the greatest good for you and others, it allows you to have more ease, joy, and grace in your life. And that happiness comes from that that you're talking about. 
So being spiritual doesn't mean just putting a happy face on everything and not feeling your feelings. Right. You can still feel your feelings but it's how you're interpreting them that is different is what you're saying. It's how you're moving through them, oh. how you're moving through them, right? That's the big, that's the big uh, distinction because very often in the beginning of somebody's spiritual journey, they will um, say, oh my God, I can't say anything negative. <gasps> if I have a negative feeling, I'm going to be in trouble. No, no, no. <laughs> that's human. <laughs> we have yeah. a whole range, a whole rainbow. There's like if we could have like, you know, colors come across the street, a whole rainbow. <laughs> and we are human beings. So being able to experience pain and suffering and challenges is real. So we don't want to cut off parts of ourselves to pretend that's not real, but we get to choose how long do we want to stay having a temper tantrum? Maybe not so long. It might not be the best, highest good for everyone around. How long do we want to be, you know, pissed off and, you know, moping around, you know, you don't. So if you want to have a space that's a greater spiritual life, more ease, joy, and grace, then you start to look at how can I be mindful in each moment and what tools do I use? And the breath and the meditation is a really big one, connecting with nature, finding the community, or creating your tribe mindfully of people you resonate with and uplift your heart is another one you know and, and you know the prayer and the meditation is is a great inception point a really great catalyst for everyone even if it's a few minutes a day even if it's just a few minutes when you wake up and when you go to sleep that's like the book ends and even you can restart your day if you miss your morning practice you can always restart your day go to your car at lunch take five or ten minutes and do a meditation you know there's so many great guided meditation apps like i talk about insight timer in the book but there's so many and there's so many youtube meditations i know you and i have done the abraham hicks ones together on youtube yeah, there's that's a good so one. Many tools i think the main thing is we're not our thoughts and meditation kind of gives us a distance between our thoughts and our emotions and who we are as that supreme being that's connected to everyone and everything source mm -hmm. And the more you meditate, the more you can kind of watch your thoughts go by, like you're watching cars drive down a highway and not get in the car and like, you know, lose yourself in the thought or emotion. But just know, like you said, just let it move through you. It's going to pass. Ultimately, it's going to be okay, which is my next question. Do we live in a friendly universe? <laughs> yes, we live in a friendly universe. I think that we create our reality. So um, I, I'm somebody who likes to see the glass half full or even overflowing. And so, um, you know, it's a funny question because um, it's, it, we could have a whole nother half an hour on that philosophical conversation about is the universe inside of us? Is it outside of us? Are we creating it? I believe we're creating it. And so, um, you know, your thoughts, are your reality. I mean, we, we years ago when we were in our 20s together read um, that book, what was it? Um, Thought, uh, Think and Grow Rich, remember yeah. that? Yeah, and so you know, this was in my 20s, you know, you and I both were like, oh, thoughts are things. Okay, so let's choose our thoughts wisely. And so I still teach, you know, thoughts create your reality. And um, my language of energy and energy of language class really gets into let's speak from a place that's high vibrating. Let's have thoughts. If we have negative thoughts, well, <laughs> sorry, less. That means it's truth. If we have that's negative bad. thoughts, we can reframe them. We sure. can we can look at how else, what else is possible. Um, and, and reframe them to change our point of view, because again, it is just point of view, right? So if our point of view recognizes there's infinite possibilities, then you can create a new thought and those 10 seconds you can say, okay, I'm, I'm getting into my ego here and I'd like to be in my heart space. I'd like to be with my divine spirit. And so the meditation and the prayer and all these different tools, allow you to separate and move out of thinking your mind is all that is and move into that that greater space where you get to experience the different levels of 
you know, alpha brain waves, theta brain waves, delta brain waves, and beyond. And it's a huge, vast experience. It's really amazing and beautiful and colorful and like a kaleidoscope. It's incredible and very friendly. I love that. So one more question, then we're going to get into your free gifts. I'm so excited. Um, so, um, so is building faith a muscle? Developing faith, developing this positive attitude that everything's going to ultimately work out for our highest good? Yeah, I think that, um, is it a muscle? Yeah, we call it a practice. So, um, yeah, we do. We do believe meditation practice, that's a big part of it is, is trust and it, it gets into the heart again so you know the more that you do work to release what we call samskaras in yoga or Eckhart Tolle calls them pain bodies or there's different names but all so that trauma, trauma that is super trendy now you have to your dark shadow self there's all kinds of names for it yeah right dark night of the soul yeah so um traumas and dramas you know is a good one you know llamas with traumas and dramas so we can we can tune in in to recognize oh I'm in one of these right and I can change the story change the context of how I am with this and rather being a victim of these circumstances then we can recognize if we're the creators and you and I would say creatresses of our reality then we can actually just simply use tools to move on out of it into a new moment and a new possibility, allowing ourselves to move up in our vibration. And sometimes it takes a few steps. It doesn't happen like just that, but we can move into it mindfully. And um, yeah, so that's really recognized. You just continue your practice and it's perfect and okay where you are. It's, exactly. it's perfect and okay to have a down day that's that's the whole part of the journey that's fun enjoying the journey it's definitely a journey and we could talk for hours i have like 10 more <laughs> questions like on the tip of my tongue to ask you but we'll have to do that for the next one okay. or maybe like you said an in-person workshop yeah. so how do people keep in touch with you Val? you have a lot of great wisdom this is just a tiny snippet of all the wisdom that you can share and i'm sure these listeners want to get more of you how can they keep in touch well, the best way to keep in touch um, would be reach out to me. We're offering a free gift um, to everyone who reaches out to us through our website, um, zendenyogaschool.com. So just Google zendenyogaschool.com, and there's a contact section. And if you put um, hashtag um, free gift new year, new you summit, we will know that you came from this talk and we're offering half off. Oh my God. Half off. Yes. I for, love this. You have but, such a spirit of generosity. That's beautiful. So tell yes. them what you're going to get half off of. What, what does that special uh, package entail? Yes. Half off a two night, three day disconnect to reconnect retreat. Whoa. So you can upgrade to more days, but we're going to give you half off the initial pricing for that portion. Um, it's usually 600 bucks. It includes accommodations, breakfast and lunch energizing, nutritionally balancing smoothies, um, acupuncture, massage, yoga, meditation, classes with us all day. It's amazing. And obviously, you know, um, enjoying our company, being able to pick our brains and spend time with us. And so you can certainly reach out via email. We have coaching programs we do remotely, but coming for a retreat in person, I mean, it's the best way. Oh my God. That's such a great way to start off 2020 is to start off with a retreat, like detox your body, detox your mind, and they can get in touch with you and learn more from you and from your super spiritual, awesome, divinely appointed husband <laughs> yes. manifested because of this work. But that's another section of the book, Romance. Yes. We'll have to give that too. So Same. thank you so much, Val, for tuning in from Boca Raton, Florida. And I'm looking forward to all we're going to manifest together with our listeners in 2020. 
And we'll talk to you soon, everyone. Have a great 2020. Stay tuned for the next area of our summit. It's going to be amazing. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Namaste. Love you. Namaste, everyone. Have a beautiful 2020 and happy Thanksgiving and holiday season. I love you, Rebecca. Bye, everyone. Love you. Bye. <laughs>